feel that little stutter in there? Yeah. You can keep shuffling because all you have to do is... I grew up in Denver, Colorado. You know, went through high school, played football there. I was in Durango, Colorado for college. I got coached by a really good football coach. You know, my position coach was Gus Bradley. Gus is a defensive coordinator with the Chargers, right now the LA Chargers. He did teach the next level football. Even, even back then it was about learning, hey, what's the offense giving you? What are the tells giving you? And, and that's something that helped me because I wasn't the fastest or the best player out on the field. It helped me have the ability to make some plays because you could narrow down what they were gonna do. My dad was a Marine. That's kind of what everybody in his family had always done. That's what I just assumed I would do. So he talked me into really, him and my mom talked me into going to college and just, you know, do the college thing. Maybe you can go to the Marines and be an officer. Maybe you can join afterwards, whatever the case is. And I got hurt my third season again. You know, I got hurt second year, third year. I got hurt bad enough where I couldn't pass the physical. So I went down to the recruiting station and was just gonna join because now it's time, right? You can't play ball anymore. So why are you in college? And, and I went to go join the Marines and they, they, they just laughed at me too. If you can't play football, why, how, what makes you think you could be a Marine? You know? So then I was kind of like lost for a little while. I mean, my dad sat down and talked for a long time. They advised, hey, just get your degree. It was very important for my mom for me to get my degree. So I was gonna stick it out. And Gus really brought me back and just said, hey, why don't you, why don't you just be around ball? Come out spring ball with us and help set up drills, whatever. And he helped also get you into the coaching. You can do this and then give you a little bit more responsibility and give you a little bit more. And I didn't know what else I was gonna do with my life, so I said okay, and, and it kinda made me come through to here where I am today. I've had the opportunity to coach all over the country. My family's moved a bunch of times, and I thank my wife and kids for allowing us to do that. It's been a great journey for us all. I mean, we've coached on the, on the West Coast at Southern Cal, you know, down south at, at Jacksonville. We've been all throughout the Midwest. Last time we were in Michigan, we were at Michigan Tech up there. Had a chance to take some long bus rides on those things and learn the UP a little bit, you know. I can tell you it's not where you want to be in the wintertime, but the rest of the year it's awesome. Just having that ability to go through and, and say you've, you've coached from the cold is cold, and, and listen, the UP is way less cold than Fargo, North Dakota, and we've been there. So it, it's been a great journey for us to be all over. You know, we've coached from Division Three to the NFL, and that's really helped my coaching style and kind of helped me grow up in this business and, and see a common thread through all kinds of different kids. You don't know how much of an impact you have on some young men's lives until after the fact. You can get up and tell a good story or you can make a point in a position meeting that might not make a dent in a guy when he's young. But the cool thing is, is we all have those players and those stories that they call you four years after they're done playing or five years and they're saying, hey, listen, this really helped me become a man. This really helped me guide me to what I want to do. This really helped me, you know, find religion and find faith. And, and that encourages you as a guy, as a coach to, hey, we can keep doing that and, and making people's lives better. Coach Tucker called me and said, there's a chance that we, you know, have a defense coordinator job here. Would you be interested? To tell you the truth, I, I really was thinking to myself, it's, it's a great opportunity to go meet the guys at Michigan State more than anything else because as a football coach and a fan, you've always respected Michigan State the way they play defense. And really in my mind, when we first started looking at this job, you know, me and my family, I was like, I'm just gonna go up there to try to steal ideas. And I didn't know if it was really real in, in my mind. It was just a weird time and a lot of the guys switched there. And when I had a chance to sit down with Coach Tucker for the first time, it was like, wow, you know, I mean, this dude's, he's sharp. He's a defensive mind that you, that you love to be around. You know, he's been through a lot of guys. The people that I talk to, because, I mean, we all do research on each other. You know, we all coach with similar guys or the same guys, and you can call and try to pick their brains. Everybody had such good things to say about the man. So, you know, when I got here, his personality is infectious. He's a great guy to be around, just sit down and talk to. He's a, he's a real guy. We talked later and he offered me the job and, and it was one of those deals that it's something special to be part of a Big Ten team with a defense that's been as good as we've been here for so many years and, and be around the guys who helped build it, you know, to be around HB and, and Tress and Burt and, and Ross is a guy that I've known before that I've clinicked with and stuff like that and to be around that staff and to have that many good minds in a room, you, you really hope that you can build something special here. When you watch the guys on the field, just like they've always done here, play as hard as they can. Play with relentless passion to get to the ball. That's the number one thing you want to see out of every defense because you know what's going to happen? There's going to be things that the, the fans don't notice that the three technique got reached or the backer ran through the wrong gap and blah, blah. The things the fans notice is the guys that 
hey, I just ran for 80 yards down the middle of the field, no one touched me. That, that, those, are, those are things that effort can take away. And it's something that uh, Michigan State's had here for years is to say, that, that play with tremendous effort. Let's keep doing that. Let's, let's get guys who play hard, as hard as they can, uh, that, that fight to get the ball out. Then you really want to get to the point where you say, okay, here's 11 guys playing as hard as they can, every single snap, good. Now get them playing fast. And then you really want a defense that you say, hey, these guys enjoy and they love playing together. You can tell when you're out there on a field whether you call the same call every single time and you know what its strengths and weaknesses are and you know where you put the stress on guys. They're going to run the ball. They're going to make plays because they understand when, hey, this play is coming and I'm going to go make a play. And then when they do, everybody's celebrating and have a great time. And they don't care who makes the play. And if we can get that, that that's more the philosophy side of things is get that going. What you call on defense is less important than those things. Guys playing as hard as they can and as fast as they can and understand what they do and being clean and, and, then, and then celebrating and having a good time together and understanding team defense. Those are the three things that you really look for, no matter how much defense you get. He's going to go down, but he's not going to go down very far because it's going to be there. we got to go hands and we got to work on getting there. Okay? And all you know, right now, looking forward to the most, it's getting on the field and getting to know these guys and getting to know who they are and, and see them. You don't always see the real person that people are until it's game day and something went bad or it went good. I'm excited to get to know people in, in, at that level. You know, the level that we have right now where, hey, it's easy, we haven't played a game yet or we're, or we're fighting back and forth or practice got a little hard here and you kind of see, but the real person comes out in you when it's, hey, we just gave up a long drive for a touchdown or an explosive for a touchdown or we've been beating the heck out of a team for three quarters, hey, are we starting to lose our focus or not? You know, th those are the things that, that you really like to see because that's when you really get a chance to know people. How much of a killer attitude do you have or how much of a fight do you need to get them back involved or how much do you gotta get after them or where, what's their personality like? I mean, those are the things that are fun is to get people to know on that really raw level of emotion. I'm looking forward to those times. This was Judd's favorite day. He loved the start of practice. Saying we're excited would be an understatement. You know, it's been an incredible seven months for all of us. I think when you start the season, it's an excellent chance to start moving forward. When we were able to bring them back here, we really just tried to build a schedule for them to keep them used to being a student athlete that's busy. You know, they're used to going to their classes. They're used to going to a workout in the morning. They're used to going to the academic center for meetings. And now when you don't have anywhere to go, I think they felt a little lost. It's allowed us some flexibility that's been really neat. Um, you know, we can practice maybe a little bit earlier in the day. I think from a mental health perspective, you know, walking out of here more like at 3.30 instead of starting at 3.30 and getting out of here at 6.30 has been uniquely different. Um, it's allowed us to do a lot more individual skill development things, uh, work on their game a little bit more, and for them to take some ownership in their game. Our players worked very hard. We had an incredible July and August, and I thought we made a lot of progress as a team, even though it was in a different way, more in the weight room, individual work. We're making some progress. We're looking forward to trying to get back to some normalcy, is I guess the best way to put it. We've had some guys make some serious improvements. Um, I like the direction we're heading. With that, we need guys to step up. Of course, uh, Rocket Watts will be one, Aaron Henry, Gabe Brown. The addition of Joey Hauser, who at least has a year under his belt playing in the system. Boy, he can pass, shoot, dribble, defend. He can do a lot of things. He might be one of the best passers that I've had. And definitely as a big man, best passer since who knows who, but uh, maybe that magical guy that was here a long time ago. Because for his size at 6'8 or 9, he sees the court extremely well. And I just hope that he enjoys it as much as I think he's going I think Mo had a really, really solid freshman year. I mean, she's a competitor. She's really improved her outside shot. I would say her three-point um, ability. She has a goal to increase her percentage by six percentage points this year from behind the arc. Mo's a natural leader. I mean, she was a leader as a freshman. She wants to lead. She's a um, very competitive young lady. And I think if I had to see the most improvement in her, it's definitely from the three-point line. 
You know, I think my team's physically strong enough to play on the road, mentally tough enough to play on the road, but it's going to be different. We're going to have to bring our own energy. I think you're going to have to really rely on your leadership, on your togetherness. It's given our team a chance to get closer. We've really just tried to take it one day at a time and as silly as that sounds. You know, I just think for us, we're gonna control what we can control and that's our little group of people right now. Every day we come into practice, we feel grateful and blessed that we have an opportunity to play the sport. I think we have to do some things and be committed as young people to make the right choices so that we can continue to play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mask up and get out. So have a good day, guys. Good afternoon, everybody, from Pasadena. The Spartans haven't been here since George Perlis and company beat USC in the 88 Rose Bowl. And this is such an outstanding reward for really a spectacular Spartan season. Spartan Nation couldn't be any more excited. D'Antonio will bring them out. And when he does, he'll little trot out. This is a team that stays together. And here come the Michigan State Spartans. Out of the tunnel to our right from their locker room. Michigan State, of course, deferred. And that means that Stanford will get the ball. They have the number one return team in the country. And Ty Montgomery is the man back deep. We are underway in Pasadena. Rolls out and completes the first pass to Gleicher. Third down and a bunch after the penalty. Quick throw to the outside and nothing doing. Stanford forced a punt. Rector was swallowed on that reception. Spartans at their 38. Cook is going to air it out again. Snaps it off complete into the middle and that was Tony Lippin. The snap to Connor. Doesn't put anybody to throw it to. Finally dumps it out right side. Trevin Pendleton's got it at the 20. Now the ball's at the two. First and goal. Connor Cook under center. Has Pendleton and Jeremy Langford behind him. Hands to Jeremy. Cutting it outside left. He's got too much speed. He beats his man. Jordan Richards into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. And the Spartans are on the board in the 100th Rose Bowl. And now Hogan. Empties out under center. They direct snap it to Gaffney. Hit it to goal line. Driven back. The Spartans think they have a safety. I'm not sure, but they did blast Tyler Gaffney back into the end zone. Tyler Ellsworth with a huge hit from his middle linebacker spot. Danny Fowler wide side left. Burbridge to the right. Connor Cook's under center. Far side got one on one. Reaching for it at the four-yard line is Benny Fowler. Neglected on the wing, now he goes in motion left. Connor back to throw. He's at the 10, running to his right. That's it, end zone. Caught! Trevin Pendleton, touchdown, MSU! And Michigan State with 28 seconds to play in the half. Shortens this up to 17-13 with a PAT coming. Fowler and Kings are set left. Tony Lippett deployed to the right. Connor Cook with Langford to his right is in the shotgun. Connor guns it left side. Nice grab, made it to 40 at the 45 yard line. Up to the 50 and now into Stanford territory goes Benny Fowler. He's carrying the Stanford Cardinal all the way inside the 15 yard line. Field goal drive from 32 now for Michael Geiger. And he hits it. Michael Geiger has tied the ball game. 11 and 48 to play here in the third. 17 to 17 at the Rose Bowl. Hogan from the shotgun. Steps back deep, winds up and throws deep middle. And it is picked off. Trey Waynes and Isaiah Lewis in double coverage on Michael Rector. 
at the 25-yard line of Michigan State, and Trey Waynes went up for the ball and came down with it. Second down, almost 10. Just shy of the seven now. Hogan's under center. Hands to Gaffney again. Hit at the line of scrimmage and shoved back. He could have lost the yard. Back close to the five-yard line, Shalik Calhoun and Makaijah Reynolds come up big on that play. Long count. The Spartans put four defensive linemen down, and they eat Gaffney up. Michigan State football. What a play by the Spartans. He never had a chance. Nikos Allen, remember the hit on Braxton Miller in the Big right. Ten Championship game? <laughs> Knocks down Tyler Gaffney here in the Rose Bowl on a fourth and three by the Stanford Cardinal. They lose yardage wide to the right for Stanford. Rector to the left. And nowhere to go. They look to stay on the ground, and there's nowhere at all to go. For Tyler Gaffney, Jeremy Langford to the right of Connor Cook. Shotgun snap. Left side throw. Josiah with the catch at the 30. Spins out of a tackle, and he's on his feet to the 25-yard line. Langford to the left, Pendleton to the right of Connor Cook in the shotgun. Connor winds up, throws over the middle. Oh, there he is. The five. He's Cody in there. Lippin dives into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans take the lead in the Rose Bowl. No receivers to the right. Charlie Hopkins to tight end, tight right. Over the backfield, and he's going to be sacked. A play fake, and then as he turned and looked upfield, there was nobody in front of him except Spartans, and Denzel Drone knocked him down. Ball at the 33. Hogan takes the shotgun snap. Hands the ball back to Gamp. Oh. And he is hit for a loss. Guess who? Tyler Gaffney drilled by Danico Allen, who makes play after play after play. Cardinals 24, Stanford 20, minute 46 to go in the Rose Bowl. Hogan under center, long count. Hands He's to stopped Gaffney. Him. He's He's stopped him. He's he stopped him. He won't go anywhere. He won't go anywhere. Michigan State stops Stanford and stuffs him at the line of scrimmage. The Spartans say he didn't get it. Michigan State will take over on the 34-yard line. Kyler Ellsworth, one of the Mike linebackers who replaced Bulla here today. And the Spartans are on their way to a win in the Rose Bowl. Woo! How about that defense? How they about that them. mean green defense? And the Spartans in this Classic granddaddy of them all will go to four wins and only one loss. And Andrew Maxwell, who was a true team player this year, has the ball last as the Spartans win the 100th Rose Bowl.